against Vladimir Putin's Russian military aggression is about to get harder. The head of NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, warning a new generation of Russian cruise missiles could strike critical military radars and missiles inside the United States. Iran's foreign ministry today calling Saudi-led airstrikes against Shiite Muslim rebels in Yemen a, quote, dangerous step. The minister continued saying the strikes will only worsen the crisis in that country. Strikes targeted military installations in Yemen held by the Shiite rebels known as the Houthi. War pulled life from the heart of Gaza. It left a wasteland. Smoke still rises. 125 U.S. Special Forces have evacuated the country of Yemen because terrorists there are running wild. Last September, President Obama called Yemen a success story in fighting the war on terror. Obviously, things have changed. Tunisia. Authorities have arrested more than 20 suspected terrorists after 23 people were massacred in the capital city of Tunis. In Libya, terrorists affiliated with ISIS are battling to control the country because there is no central authority there. Syria. ISIS controls thousands of square miles, trying to depose the Assad regime. More than 200,000 people have been killed in the Syrian conflict. The head of British intelligence this week said something that was chilling. He said that uh, the world should be prepared for a possible mass casualty attack. Uh, what's your read on that? You see these intelligence reports. Do you feel the same way? Well, as far as I know, after looking at the reports I've seen, uh, I think this is within the realm of possibility. I think we're in an all-out situation. France has declared war. What that means, I'm not quite sure, but we're going to see. Thanks. Let's stay in Washington now for a moment. Late developments in a cyber hacking at the White House that we first told you about last October. Andrea Mitchell is monitoring this from our D.C. newsroom. Andrea, what have you learned? Well, Lester, tonight U.S. officials tell me it was Russia that hacked the White House last year, gaining access to an unclassified computer system that contained the president's private unpublished schedule. Today, we enter the gates of Kobani to get a rare look at the front lines of America's war against ISIS. This once bustling Syrian city now has craters 15 feet deep unexploded shells scattered everywhere. This is what the aftermath of four months of heavy fighting looks like. Entire city blocks leveled to the ground and all around destruction as far as the eye can see. The empty streets unnervingly quiet. Around some corners, the stench of death hanging in the air. I know you're very worried about Iran and its nuclear program, uh, aren't you? Everybody is. Everybody so is. under what circumstances would the kingdom, Saudi Arabia, build a nuclear bomb uh, to try to counterbalance an Iranian nuclear bomb? Nigerian troops sweep into this northeastern town in Borno State and wrest back control from Boko Haram. They showed a cache of weapons left behind by the armed group as proof of success. It's these very operations that the military says is turning the tide against Boko Haram. Boko Haram has emerged as a major security threat to Nigeria and its neighbors. It's killed thousands of people over the past six years in a campaign to carve out an Islamic state in northern Nigeria. The group has now also pledged allegiance to ISIL, which has called on its supporters to fight in Africa. In recent months, Boko Haram has mounted raids into neighboring Chad, Niger and Cameroon, taking a toll on vital supply links. Right there in the center of Old Havana today, a surprise visitor. Two days ago, there was a cruise ship parked right there. Today, as these high-level talks begin, a Cold War relic. She is the Viktor Leonov, once a Soviet spy ship, now in the Russian Navy, patrolling the waters along America's eastern seaboard, loaded with radar and electronic surveillance antenna, from stem to stern, staffed with 200 sailors and carrying 30-millimeter cannon and anti-aircraft guns. Explosions on hillsides. Amphibious landings. Combat troops storming beaches. U.S. and South Korean forces are practicing for war. Military drills that are defensive in nature, a Pentagon official tells CNN. The North Koreans have a different take. They should be dealt with only by merciless strikes. Kim Jong-un's forces did respond, firing two ballistic missiles 300 miles into the Sea of Japan. Analysts say those missiles have a range that can hit South Korea's capital and beyond. Kim's media arm says the peninsula is, quote, inching close to the brink of war. Tonight, the four suspected gunmen now dead, the Al-Qaeda-linked terror group, Al-Shabaab, claiming responsibility. Terrified students struggling to walk, escaping a massacre that lasted more than 13 hours. It began before sunrise, the terrifying thud of a grenade at the university gates, then gunfire. Terrorists strapped with explosives. Universities in Kenya were warned just last week they were targets for Al-Shabaab. The group was also behind the 2013 attack on the Westgate shopping mall in Nairobi, a four-day siege that left 67 people dead.
As you point out, Martha, they were behind that mall attack in Kenya as well. How much do authorities make of their recent threats, even naming the Mall of America? Well, they are concerned, David. That threat was made in a video from Al-Shabaab posted online in February, specifically calling for an attack on that massive mall in Minnesota. These are the children of war. <laughs> Using sticks as guns, they shoot imaginary bullets at their enemies across the front lines. If they're lucky, they get to hold a real weapon. In this government-held village in eastern Ukraine, the signs of war are everywhere, from craters caused by shelling to abandoned buildings. The UN says the fighting and other violence in Iraq killed nearly 1,400 people in January alone, nearly 800 of them civilians. In Baghdad, Iraqi Foreign Minister Ibrahim al-Jafari told his visiting Austrian counterpart that the fight against Islamic State is effectively World War III and that all the world's major capitals are under threat. Jordanian F-16s took to the skies over Syria, striking nearly 20 ISIS targets in al-Hasaka, an ISIS stronghold deep in eastern Syria. And welcome back. This morning, there's a new terror threat that's targeting malls in the U.S., Canada, and Great Britain. In a moment, I'm going to ask Homeland Security Chief Jay Johnson how serious U.S. officials are taking this threat from an al-Qaeda offshoot from Somalia. A second day of airstrikes inside Yemen by Saudi jets, bombing Iranian-backed Houthi Shia militias, which have taken control of the country. The top U.S. commander for the Middle East worries about what could be Tehran's bid for superpower status. Under a hail of gunfire, Serbian special forces are on the move. And watching the ground assault from a safe distance are Russian and Serbian military officials. Clearly trying to take advantage of the aftermath of the attacks in Paris, ISIS posted a new message on Twitter overnight calling on sympathizers to strike the soldiers, strike their police, security and intelligence members in the West. The target countries, the U.S., France, Australia and Canada. The video is a recut of a previous call to arms posted last September. Today in Gaza, the ruins of homes are children's playgrounds. Factory floors are filled with destroyed machinery. The only power plant storage tanks are a crumpled heap. And the damage, the destruction, the devastation has obliterated entire neighborhoods. It's amazing to see how much this area has changed in, in uh, the last six months. It's just one after another, abandoned villages, bombed out houses, and it's hard to believe that this is Europe in the 21st century. 